everybody, I'm Petter Solberg and welcome to Special Stage. Welcome to the Castle Coombe Race Circuit. It's the 12th year running of this event, Rally Day. It keeps getting bigger and better and there are so many attractions for the crowds to enjoy today. As always, we've got a fantastic mix of action on the track, on the special feature stage and an all-star driver lineup, including 2003 World Rally Champion Petter Solberg. Stay tuned here at Special Stage for all the action from Rally Day 2012. Johnny Milner, a gentleman, but he also happens to be twice British Rally Champion here in the UK. And Paul Woodford catches up with him on the live stage. 2002 and 2003 were classic years for British rallying. And for rally fans like me, this car that you see behind you with Johnny Milner in it was one of the iconic scenes of the British Rally Championship. Of course, Johnny won the championship those two years and now a bit of a childhood dream. I'm getting to go out with Johnny before we catch up with him later on the stage here at Rally Day. I'm joined on stage then by double British rally champion Johnny Milner. Johnny, welcome to Rally Day. Absolute pleasure, and not only that, it's great to bring the, the Corolla World Rally car that we won in 02 and 03. It's superb. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've done many a, a Goodwood Festival of Speed, uh, but it doesn't really cater for the rally enthusiasts, and I think you've got such a, a blend of Group B and even before Group A. You've everything from, from old through to, through to the, the brand new car that Petter's driving, so I think people can sort of appreciate the development and the way that almost the cars have been Formula One-ified, you know, everything's low and it's all, you know, getting their weight as low as it can and carry more corner speed. Now going back to when you won the British Rally Championship, 02, 03, you did it at a competitive time. It was a classic era for British rallying, wasn't it, really? Do you see yourself returning to the British Rally Championship or the top of rallying here in Britain? I'd love to do. I mean, c coming from grass track racing uh, into rallycross and then into rallying, of course, you start doing single venues and then the BTRDA series and then you, you, you jump up to the national series and, of course, the ultimate is the Premier Championship, which is the British. And then you get in the British Championship and, of course, then you think, oh, maybe I could get my hands on a, on a title. I didn't get it on one, I got it on two. So it was sort of mission accomplished, really. And the next generation of the Milner family are just starting to do this. I've got my, my youngest daughter, 12-year-old Katie, who was a mini Milner. Uh, she's grass tracking today, just uh, just up the road off, off the M5 at a, at a British Autograph Series round, testing her new engine and uh, doing really well. So I, I've got three daughters, but I've got one that's got uh, exhaust fumes in her blood. Well, some Milners on the uh, rally stages very soon then, hopefully. Let's go back to when you started. It was a very different world then, financially, the economics were very different, but rallying itself was very different. What advice would you give to somebody now who wants to get to the level that you did and have and doesn't have a clue where to start. I think seeing Ken Block and Petter Solberg and a lot of people, you need characters in the sport. And you need to be different, you need to stand out from the rest. Uh, and not only be, a, be a, a funny character, you need to have the speed. Um, so I think there's a lot of luck involved. I've been extremely lucky to have Toyota. Toyota Japan backed me for a lot of years and still backing me now. Um, so I, th I think you need to just network as hard as you can. And never say no. I think there's a lot of people, Mark Higgins is a classic example. He won't accept no. He'll just keep pushing, pushing, pushing until he makes something happen. And that's the same for Petter, the same for Ken. It's, it's the same for everybody. It's, it's a bit of a struggle out there. And I think the, the current economic climate as well, you know, there's, there's not sort of spare cash flying about. People are trying to keep their businesses alive, never mind support rally cars and, and sponsor people. But I started in a 205 diesel van. 
as a rally car uh, from, from being luckily a British rallycross champion back in 1990 and I know we've got rallycross cars here today, in fact about to go out and there's one of my sponsored cars down there, the little Lotus that's leading the, the, the modified class this year with Ash Simpson. But I think you need to move with the times and I think you just need to be cheeky, you need to get out there and put yourself about and, and be noticed and be different. Thanks for joining us, Johnny, here at Rally Day and on the Special Stage TV show. And um, Johnny Milner, everybody, is a blooming nice bloke. And uh, he's around if you want to get some autographs or speak to him about his rally career. And a Yorkshireman. <laughs> As am I. Rally Day is about all different disciplines of rallying and motorsport in general. If you've been catching our coverage of the All-Wheel Drive Club Championship this year, then the drivers and cars that Breed is hanging about with right now will be no surprise to you. Andy, no stranger to the 4x4 off-roading. You've been involved in this culture for quite a while. Yeah, um, used to come with my parents years ago with the all-wheel drive club in the early days and um, started racing myself competitively about 10 years ago Yeah, and, and moved with it with the last 10 years, yeah. What gave you the edge to get in there and start competing? Um, well, my business is specialising in Land Rovers uh, and that's always been a passion. Motorsport, being a petrol head, is something I've always been into. So it just worked to promote the business. Uh, obviously, Land Rovers being four by four vehicles and off road. Um, my first vehicle was a Land Rover based um, off roader, and we've just evolved into these cars that we're racing now. Yes, the evolution of these cars is something else. I mean, what we see out in the Safari Championship, it's so variant. So what mod modifications do they make to these types of cars? Or, you know, where do they go to acquire these vehicles? Um, I mean, that's a tricky question. A lot of people build their own. Um, the lower class, well, say the lower classes, the, the, there's eight classes in total. Um, starting from one to eight and obviously the eight being the most modified cars where the number one is production vehicles um, and there's a set of regs which can be downloaded on the all drive club website which gives people what they can and can't do but you've got diesel classes there's now separate classes for independent suspension because the suspension is now is what's making us cover the car uh, making the cars cover the ground so quick and now there's various manufacturers of cars that are coming out. I mean, I'm driving a Milner R5. Um, they're based in Matlock. They, they uh, designed and build these type of car. There's, there's three or four small bespoke companies building them. Um, but say that it is still a sport where as long as you do it to the right regs and the MSA Blue Book, you can build your own. I mean, Rick, who's won our championship a few times, he actually built and designed the whole car himself. Well, you're on a recreational day today at Rally Day and you're all very well represented here. Yeah, it's been fantastic. I mean, luckily, we was here last year and it was a little bit wet and miserable, but today the sun's out and the crowds have come. So, yeah, no, it's really good. We're, we're pleased to be here. We're just good to support support the club, uh, support Rally Day and, uh, and hopefully give all the spectators something to look at. Well, John-Louis Schlesser, you're a name that is synonymous with off-road racing and uh, the Schlesser buggy we, we see behind us, the one that you're campaigning this year is the latest in a long line of uh, quite iconic cars in this sport. Yes, uh, of course we build uh, until now 21 different cars. Even if we have uh, all the cars was, uh, let's say, uh, a new model, it was always something different. So 21 model different, yes. The beauty of this sport is innovation, isn't it? Even from the lowest levels, people are able to really innovate and put their own take on design and technology and that's really what you did on a bigger level wasn't it exactly so the the, the good thing on uh, on off-road and uh, especially on the rally red you can uh, put what you want in the limit of the some rules of course but you can and this is the only uh, place where you can uh, invent let's say many many things and you can put your what you have in your brain on the paper, so it's, that's why it's interesting for me. Well, you've certainly done that over the years. Now, today's a bit of fun for you. It's a chance to get out and sign a few autographs and um, have a look at you know, the grassroots and yeah. uh, national level of our sport, but you've got some big events coming up this year. You've, your success already in 2012 is quite impressive, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, normally, I, uh, oh, oh, today I'm leading the World Cup and uh, also the, the two-wheel drive World Cup, which is my, my goal. 
And then the next big race will be the Pharaoh Rally in Egypt. <clears throat> it's a long race also, very tough. I hope I can consolidate my leading there and uh, to have another win this year. Well, thank you for talking to us. Enjoy the day and good luck with the rest of the season. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Have a nice day too. This could be an interesting interview. We're going to presenter on presenter. Breed, were you pressing the horn then? I am managing the horn. Managing the horn. Yeah, watch that. Anything else important to do in here? Um, well, I have to keep Chris Bird under control while he goes around the track here and, you know, tries to show off. Like, I have to keep his feet on the ground and um, make sure that there's no 360s. And give us an expert commentary on the way around, I hope. Uh, I'm sure we'll do a wee bit. You know yourself. You just smile and wave. Smile and wave. I'm going to go and do that and let you like get dirty. Penguins in Madagascar. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Well, the crowds are certainly loving the excitement here in Castle Coombe and we'll be back after the break with more when Paul Woodford catches up with Mr Hollywood himself, Peter Solberg. See you then. up in this part of the show we challenge some of the drivers and co-drivers to take on our special stage trivia quiz but first let's head back to the paddock where paul is catching up with the 2003 world champion peter salberg i'm delighted to be joined by the man of the moment ford world rally team driver peter salberg peter welcome to rally day thank you thank you and welcome to special stage as well now you're in a really unique position because as a world rally champion you almost had to go right back to basics your own team your own car and we saw the raw emotion as well, and here you are in a works drive. What belief and what level of uh, motivation did it take to do that? Well, I, uh, I've done motorsport for many, many years now, you know, and, and the thing is when you can't do anything else in your life, you just have to push uh, your limit to what you love the most, and it's, it's rallying. And uh, I had a lot of other chances to go to other sports, you know, with the good contracts, yeah. but I wanted rallying. And, uh, in three weeks, three weeks we built a whole team with uh, sponsors, with the cars and trucks and people, and and uh, I I knew that I'm fast enough. If I wasn't fast enough, I would never have done it. And uh, and now we got the chance again with Ford this year, and uh, at least you can see that. Uh, okay, we are third in the world, Gym world championship now. We were laying second, but I went off a small one in uh, in Greece, so want to beat Loeb, but I have a lot of passion for this and you must be mad and crazy to do what I've done and I think about it now in after time, you know, how, how the hell did we do it, you know, but uh, everything is possible if you want it. That's a great bit of advice for anybody at any level, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it doesn't matter what you do, you know, it's, it's uh, if you do autocross or rallycross or whatever, you know, you just have to, uh, it's easy to say that to believe in yourself, but uh, if you feel you are good, and you know we are good and, and you are realistic about it, you know, you just have to push on and, and prove to yourself. And uh, I'm happy to be back at Ford here, for sure. It's a great move. Now, you're one of the most experienced guys in the World Rally Championship. You're one of only two to have done the Safari Rally, which everybody obviously talks about. You came fifth, I believe, for Ford, in fact, uh, when he first Safari Rally. But you've always had a, a world champion when you weren't a world champion as your co-driver now it's fair to say you've become the mentor you've got Yari Mati Latvala <laughs> and, and you're the man that he'll be looking to for advice what is what is it like to be in that position well for sure Yari you can tell him a lot of advice but I don't know if he's listening all the time but uh, <laughs> but Yari is, uh, is a fantastic person he loves rallying and he he have devoted his whole life for it you know and uh, he's a natural talent and I don't know what to tell him, you know, he's pushing hard and okay, he goes off a few times and but I think that's that's how it is if you if you if you want to push the limit. But it's like Malcolm Wilson said, you know, I think uh, me and Yari you won't 
we want maybe to win too much so you get you know more uh, too much uh, passionate about it and when you think about low and he just yeah i go to work uh, seven o'clock in the morning and i do some stages and go back home you know and take a coffee it looks like you know but but Yari is uh, he will, he's a very good driver for the future and uh, but um, he hasn't had his best year this year a good part of your career was spent when teams had specialist drivers. For example, you had Sarazen and Subaru doing the Tarmac and Panizzi with Peugeot. You were always a good all-rounder. And now there really isn't an option for somebody to just specialise in one surface, is there? So how important is your experience of being good on all surfaces? Well, I, you have to be good in every surface if you're going to do rallying, you know. Uh, it's so few seats in the, in, the, in the manufacturers now, so you have to be fast everywhere. And you need the experience, and if you're going to... If you're a young guy now, you you have to go go come in like Tanak did, you know, with Ford that you yeah. can build yourself up. Like I did with Ford the first uh, first time. So, well, it's it's a lot of hard work, lot a lot of training and practice, and uh, and and uh, a natural talent for sure. Yeah. Now you are, as I say, one of the most experienced guys in the World Rally Championship. So I've, I've, I've got to, that, I've got to ask. That. You're probably one of the most popular as well. <laughs> I've got to ask you this question because I mean, you won the World Rally Championship in 2003. You're the only person before, or last person before Loeb to have won it. In fact, what's your favourite event? What's your favourite event in any kind of um, championship, and uh, why? Well, I, I should say Rally GB. I won it so many times. Uh, uh, it's of course, one that's why you capped off the championship yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, for, for sure. You know, it's it's a very special rally for me. Uh, but you have also Rally Finland. You know, it's uh, it's a fantastic rally in New Zealand. It is some good ones there. You know, but since I won Rally GP so many times and won the championship, my first rally, uh, Rally B, Rally GP is is one of the uh, one of the best ones. Yeah. Well, I think the fans here today and those watching home on special stage will be pretty pleased to hear you say that. Yeah. One final question: What does the future hold for Peter Solberg? Uh, that's a that's a very good question. You know, I I uh, I still have a chance in a lot of other sports, but I I want to win in rallying. Uh, we will see. We uh, after rally Germany, we have to be a little bit further with what we do with Ford for next year. I I want to have a clear answer. You know, much earlier than we had this year. Because uh, then you can come down and start to, to prepare more uh, than we should. And if not, uh, I have a plan B and C. So, uh, so plenty of opportunities, but your heart lies here in rallying. For sure, for sure. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you for joining us here at Rally Day. Thank you very much. The feature stage is a crowd pleaser. We've got some top names in rallying here, reunited with their cars for a couple of laps around this circuit, and it's not disappointing. Just look at the crowds. Just joining me here for some of these uh, special stage questions. Don't don't be looking. All right, don't don't be oh, looking before you've seen it. You've got multiple choice, so we'll make it a bit easy for you. Yeah, I have to remember I'm bad at this. <laughs> yeah, I'm very good at driving, you know. But that's it. <laughs> How many events made up the 2003 World Rally Championship season? Is it A 10, B 12, C 16, or D 14? 14. It is 14. I had to double check myself there, but you got the first one right. It's going well. It's going well. Who was the last person to win the world championship in a two wheel drive car? Was it A. Ari Vatanen, B. Walter Rawl, C. Marku Allen, or D. Timo Makinen? Uh, 
of Alderil. It was in the Escona 400 in 1982. Well done. Ooh. Another win for. Yeah. It's, it's going much like your season, isn't it? It's going well. <laughs> All right. Question three. And it's 38 years in the WRC. How many times have Ford won Rally of Great Britain? A, six. B, ten. Your bosses are watching you. C, 18. D, 20. What was the second one? Ten. I try 10 then. He's got it, it's 10. Seven times in an Escort, two in a Focus, and one in a Fiesta. Oh. And maybe, maybe. I'm good at this. I'm good at this. <laughs> May <I'll> be. <laughs> maybe two in a Fiesta, <laughs> eh? <laughs> After this year. The closest win in a WRC event New was Zealand. Rally Jordan. Uh, he's already got it wrong. We'll put that one down. <laughs> Rally Jordan in 2011. But how close was it? A, 0 0.1 of a second. B, 0.2 of a second, you can see where this is going, can't you? C, 0.3 of a second, or D, 0.4 of a second? 0.1? It was 0.2. 0.2? It was OJ1, Latvala. Yeah, uh, the, your teammate came second. Was the closest to be never, wasn't it? Who made the. I think Wayne made these uh, made these questions, so we'll maybe chat with Wayne off camera later. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, I've put in a protest on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Rally driver excuses already. Well, that's, a, that's a wrong answer. We'll sort it out later. Yeah. Last question. Which nationality of driver has won the World Rally Championship the most times? I'm sure you'll be able to get this without multiple choice, but let's go for them anyway. A, British. B, French. C, Finnish. Or D, Italian. French. Finnish. 13 times. Lucky for some, eh? Yeah. It's the Finnish. Oh. Well done. Thank you for joining us. As well as the action on the track, there are plenty of displays for the fans here today, with displays from all eras of the sport, from the modern to the forgotten, and those that will always have a place in the history of the sport. And it isn't just rallying as you saw in part one, the show caters for more disciplines, and there are all kinds of displays from off-road to rallycross for people to have a look around and in some cases have a high-speed passenger ride if they feel brave enough. Man who's always very entertaining here at Rally Day. We're looking forward to some more skids. You want a few more skids and a bit more tire smoke, is it? Well, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy. Good luck to you. Guarantee. Phil Collins is back at Rally Day and always a welcome sight with the crowds that line the track. In this 2.5 Millington powered Mark II Escort, 300 brake horsepower with a sequential gearbox and huge 17 inch wheels. It's powered into great success over in Ireland. Millington is a big name in rallying at the minute, connected with Mark II escorts throughout the various championships, including of course the RAIS Get Connected BTRDA Gravel Championship, where Millington has taken Matthew Robinson to Silver Star Championship glory this season. Phil Collins himself, one of the big names here at Rally Day, a works driver with various teams, a true gent of the sport as well, and someone who loves nothing better than to do some donuts and entertain the fans with this Mark II escort. With Phil Collins a champion, you have championed this car for long enough, but can you champion our trivia special stage quiz? Good luck to you, because you're going to need it. <laughs> okay, question one. How many events made up the 2003 WRC season? Was it A10, B12, C14 or D16? I'd say the 16. Oh, well, you would be incorrect on number one. So we're looking at a red light for you, Phil Collins. It was A14. Okay, question two. Who was the last person to win the world championship in a two-wheel drive car? You should know this one. Is it A, Ari Vatanen, B, Walter Rorrell, C, Marco Allen, or D, Timo Mackinen? That would be Ari Vatanen. 
It wasn't. <laughs> it was B. Walter Rarl in in a Scona 400. That was in 1982. Oh, that's sad, isn't it? I should have known that. Favorite car as well. <laughs> Don't worry, we won't tell anyone. I promise. <laughs> okay. Question three. Moving swiftly along. In its 38 years in the WRC, how many times have Ford won Rally Great Britain? A6, B10, C18 or D20? I would go for 10. You would be correct. Oh, at last. Yes. It's <laughs> not bad, is it? As guesses go. And you have done better than a lot of people today here on that question. <laughs> <laughs> on that cheery <laughs> note. <laughs> Number four. The closest win in a WRC event was Rally Jordan in 2011. But how close? Now, there has been a bit of controversy about the question so far. <laughs> so we'll see how you get on. A, 0 0.1 seconds. B, 0 0.2 seconds. Z, it's, it's, sorry, C, 0 0.3 seconds. Or D, 0 0.4 seconds. 0 0.1. Oh, yeah, point, yeah, 0 0.1. Uh, well, we have B, 0 0.2 seconds, where Ogier won and Latvala was second. But there is a question mark over that question, even. <laughs> okay. Gary Matty lost. Again. Against Ogier. Question five, you're at the finish line now, Phil. Which nationality has won the World Rally Championship the most times? Was it A, British, B, French, C, Finnish, or D, Italian? Which team? Nationality. Which nationality? Of driver or team? Well, it just says which nationality. We'll have to bring it to the panel of judges. French. It was Finnish. Yes. Well, I 13 times. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I forget how far it goes back. Okay, well, look, you're off the hook now. It was a good enough score. <laughs> Enjoy your you spin. Thanks. <laughs> Jimmy, fantastic to see you in this car. You looking forward to a bit of fun on the track? Yeah, no, it was good fun. Just see where we're going now. And uh, uh, the only problem is it's <laughs> it, uh, too, we're, we're, we're wasted now with power steering. This doesn't have power steering and it's hard work. <laughs> a few things have changed since you last sat in a car like this. I'm, I'm glad it's not through the lanes in Ireland. <laughs> Here's a rare and pretty special sight. Jimmy McRae reunited with a 1978 Vauxhall Chevette as he drove in the British Championship along with the likes of Pentia Ricola and Tony Pond. In fact, this car, I believe, was the 1979 British Championship winning machine in the hands of Auricola. Vauxhall threatened the supremacy of Ford's Mark II Escort with this powerful, nimble Chevette. These imposing looks, typical of rally car design at the time, with those brutal looking wide arches. Still one of the best looking rally cars of all time, few would disagree, and the fans here at Rally Day being treated to a very special experience with the legend Jimmy McRae demonstrating the car out on the track. An iconic sight and one without which no rally show would be complete, Subaru rose to rally fame in the early 90s with their two British legends Richard Burns and Colin McRae, of course both of them taking their world championships with the Japanese team. The example here today shows the first shape of the special bodied world rally car Subarus, the car's profile related to the 22B road car. Richard Burns and Colin McRae's names adorned the side windows of these cars on the WRC stages and what a sight that was. The example here this weekend is McRae's 1997 RSC rally winning car. The S12B is perhaps one of the best known of the Subaru WRC incarnations, being the weapon of choice for a number of leading national drivers at the moment. The high profile REIS Get Connected Asphalt Rally Championship, a popular hunting ground for these particular machines. Arguably the most celebrated rally cars of all time, we obviously owe the current turbocharged four wheel drive generation of rally cars, at least in part to the Audi Quattro. Fantastic range here at Rally Day, giving the fans a glimpse at the history and evolution of this car, from the production looking cars to the iconic colour schemes of the Rothmans era, and of course the two cars that capture the imagination and spirit of everyone who remembers the Group B era, the short wheelbase Quattro Sport and the flagship of the Rally Quattros, the monstrous S1. Our cameraman Luke's favourite rally car this and few would disagree with him, it's one of the best looking the stages have ever seen. 
The Peugeot 306 Maxi comes from an era when Maxi kit cars ruled the special stages of the UK and also Europe. This ex Delacour car, driven by the French driver in 1998, to much success on the continent, maintains its works colours and still oozes the romance of an era of rallying that did so much to bring rallying to a wider audience. That high revving, naturally aspirated engine sounding fantastic. Johnny Milner, double British rally champion, but can you be the champion of our special stage trivia quiz? Let's see. Five questions, multiple choice, making it as easy as possible for you. Question one. How many events made up the 2003 World Rally Championship season? I know this really isn't your bag. It should have been British Rally Championship questions. Remember that one for next time, Producer Wayne. A, 10. B, 12. C, 14. Or D, 16. I'm thinking 14. It is 14. First one's prize. right. There's no prize yet. Oh. You're just on question one. This is question two now. Who was the last person to win the World Championship in a two-wheel drive car? Was it A, Ari Vatanen? B, Walter Rawl, C, Marco Allen, or was it D, Timo Mackinen? Good God. Oh, I've got to go, f oh, Marco Allen. It's wrong, it's Walter Rawl, a Skona 400, 1982. That's written in front of me. I thought me. he was just born then. <laughs> I wasn't even born then. <laughs> Question three. In its 38 years in the WRC, how many times has Ford won Rally of Great Britain? A, six. B, 10. C, 18. Or D, 20. I would have to go for... Oh. <laughs> six, 10, 18, 20. <laughs> 10. You got it right. Is that two out of three so far? Yeah. Uh, Question four. The closest victory in a WRC event was Rally Jordan in 2011. But, but how, I thought you were going to argue. We've had a few arguments on this one. But how close was it? A, 0.1 of a second. B, 0.2 of a second. C, 0.3 of a second. Or D, 0.4 of a second. I think 0.2. He's got it. That's three out of four. You could maybe match Petra if you get this one. Which nationality has won the World Rally Championship the most times? A, British. B, if only. B, French. C, Finnish. Or D, Italian. I think Italian. I would have said it's Sebastian's a little thinker now, isn't he? I would have thought. French, French. It's got to be French. It's Finnish. They haven't quite got them yet. There, 13 for the Finns. Really? Yeah. It's, uh, it's three out of five for the auctionman. Thanks, Johnny. Thank you very much. It's been an amazing day so far, Paul. I mean, Peter Solberg certainly seems to enjoy himself. He's a showman. He isn't certainly he? is. He's drawing the crowd. What about these questions, though? Have I made them a bit hard, these yeah. special stage quiz In questions? Fairness, I did try this quiz myself before we went around the people, and I think I got a whole measly one out of five. <laughs> well, you're matching some of the people so far, but we've got plenty more people left to put the uh, special stage trivia to. Yeah. And we've got plenty more action as well. Join us after the break here at Special Stage. See you then. Well, we've seen British rally champions, world rally champions here at Rally Day today, but there are other ways and forms of rallying and getting into rallying that Brit's going to be checking out very soon. Unfortunately, Jamie, sometimes rallying gets a name as a checkbook sport, but endurance rallying, it's another way to get involved in motorsport without forking out your whole month's wages. That's right. A lot of people are quite frightened with the amount of money that's involved in competing at a level including stage rallying um, and, and track racing and all the, those sort of glamorous types of motorsports. Endurance rallying appeals to the people that don't necessarily have the funds to be able to compete at such a level. Uh, endurance rallying was, was developed to cater for those people who can prepare a car, they can go rallying and they can uh, enjoy to a point what the guys who are, have much greater budgets than these do. And they can go through the forests, they can uh, compete on what we call selectives, on airfields, 
uh, we can we can do private estates i mean the world is our oyster with endurance rallying um costs are quite minimal um we use tires that don't do a lot of land damage and, and as a result of that we don't get um so many charges it's tough challenging and testing for the drivers i mean it's all in the name endurance Endurance is what it's all about. Uh, they start often early in the morning on, say, a Saturday, and they will drive using public roads as non-competitive sections to link in with estates and, as I said earlier, uh, airfields and forestry uh, sections. Um, the event will run all day, sometimes into the early hours of the morning on the following day, or it may end earlier on the Saturday and then start again on the Sunday and do more of the same. Competitive mileage in many many events exceed 200 miles uh, you get all this for about 200 to 250 pound entry fee so it is affordable there are a lot of restrictions in endurance which does make it more affordable um, but we have the same amount of fun as the guys who spend 50 hundred thousand pound a year competing in what they want to do but we do it only a fraction of the cost um, it's all about fun motorsports fun and it's just another element of that fun. Rally Day as well is a fantastic opportunity, a great place to stage what is going on here and how to connect with your target audience really. Yes, I mean we're here, uh, people can just come in have a chat, we've had a lot of people just pop in, want to know what it's all about. Uh, we can show them two cars that are competing at the moment. They are both MGs but there are Fords and Peugeots and all manner of vehicles that take part in it. Um, but yeah, anyone who, who, who's been popped by have been intrigued by what's going on. It is a it's a bit different. It's uh, it's not road running. It's not stage running. So people are naturally inquisitive about what we're we're about. We explain, and they have all left here thinking, oh, it's another avenue to explore if they do want to go down the route of rallying. It does sound interesting and enjoyable, and good luck with the rest of it, Jimmy. Thank you very much. Cheers. Here you go. Special stage trivia questions. Question one: How many events made up the 2003? World Rally Championship season. Perhaps Petter had um, a bit of an inkling on this one since it's his year. A, 10, B, 12, C, 14, or D, 16? 14. He's got it. One out of one. Question two. What was the la who was the last person even to win the World Championship in a two-wheel drive car? Was it A, Ari Vatanen, B, Walter Rawl, C, Marco Allen, or D, Timo Mäkinen? No, a bit of a trick question because it was Walter Rawl, everyone, I would have said Ari Vatanen as well. One out of two. Question three, in its 38 years in the WRC, how many times has Ford won Rally of Great Britain? A6, B10, C18 or D20? Six. You're underestimating it, it's ten. It was B. Can we cut that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who will be watching. <laughs> Seven escorts, two Focus and one Fiesta. Oh, man. Hopefully we'll add to that tally oh, yeah, very soon. Fiesta, yeah. Question four. The closest victory in a WRC event was Rally Jordan. Petter actually uh, contests this question, we'll see. In 2011, but how close was it? A, 0.1 seconds. B, 0.2 seconds. You can probably see where this is going. Yeah. C, 0.3 seconds. Or D, 0.4 seconds. I thought it was 0.17 seconds. I think we'll give him that, don't you? It was, it was, we've got two seconds, but perhaps somebody rounded it up on the, on the Google that Wayne looks at. <laughs> we'll give you that one. It's, it was um, OJ won over, over Latvala in second, so I thought you might remember that one. We'll give you that one. That's three out of four so far. Is it? Yeah. So question five. Which nationality has won the World Rally Championship the most times? A, British. B, French. C, Finnish, or D, me? Italian? <laughs> French. No? No, it's the Finnish. 13 times. It was lucky for the Finnish, it's unlucky for you today, though. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on Special Stage. Okay, thank you. Cheers. Well, so many have tried, but they have all failed to escape this Special Stage <laughs> quiz today, Phil, so we're going to okay. nab you with the same. Okay, well, we'll have a go. You ready for this? Have you done Martin Holmes? He's the one. Uh, no, we'll go and get him next, yeah, then. You go and find him, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Give us a go. We'll then. let you know how he scores. Right, I'll make a phone. <laughs> okay, question number one. <clears throat> how many events made up the 2003 WRC season? Was it A, do you know this before I even start, <laughs> 10, B, 12, 
C14 14. or D16. Look at that. He didn't even need the four of them. 14 is correct. Well done. Okay, question two. Who was the last person to win the world championship in a two-wheel drive car? Was it A, Ari Vatanen, B, Walter Rarell, C, Marco Allen, or D, Timo Mackinen? Uh, to win the world championship in would it be possibly Marco. It wasn't. No, it was B. Walter Rowell, and that was in an Escona 400 okay. in 1982. Okay, I was still in the pram at the time, so <laughs> I can be excused for that one. <laughs> Fair enough. That's that's good enough. Question three: In its 38 years in the WRC, how many times have Ford won Rally GB? Was it A. Six, B. Ten. C, 18, D, 20. Now, if Jared Quinn got this wrong... In how many years? Uh, in its 38 years in the WRC. Okay. How many times have Ford won Rally Just Great Britain? Again quickly. A, 6, B, 10, C, 18, D, 20. Uh, it'll be good. It'll be about 18. It wasn't, no. He was underestimating them and you're overestimating them. It was B, 10. So that was seven escorts, two Focus okay. and one Fiesta. Okay. Question four. Yeah. The closest win in a WRC event was Rally Jordan in 2011. Yes. But how close was it? Was it A, 0 0.1 seconds, B, 0 0.2 seconds, C, 0 0.3 seconds, or D, 0 0.4 seconds? It wasn't Rally Jordan, it was Rally New Zealand. <laughs> yeah, we've had this contested already today. We'll have to go back to the, the judging panel. It was Rally New Zealand by 0 0.1 with Marcus Gronham on the last stage. <laughs> okay. In Mystery Creek. <laughs> We've got to take this back to the boss, man. I need, we need to go back to management with that one, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. then. Yeah. We, we'll make this four out of four. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the final one. Which nationality has won the World Rally Championship the most times? A, British. B, French. C, Finnish. D, Italian. In the history of the WRC? Yes. Yes. Our oh, Finns. The Finns, correct. Well done. <laughs> I, think, I think you've got a good score there. Was it three out of... Four? Yeah. Three out of four? I think, uh, I think the French are catching that record up quite quickly, but uh, yeah, there we are. Fair play, Phil. Not Thanks a million. Not too bad. So we've challenged the drivers, and as the show draws to an end, it's time to see who has claimed a podium place in our special Steeds trivia quiz, and who needs to study a little more before next year's show. If you want any more information about Rally Day and to keep up to date with all the news for the 2013 event, get yourself along to the Rally Day website where you will find all you need to know. It's been a fantastic day here at Castle Coombe. It has definitely topped my Rally Day experiences. We've had national champions, world rally champions. What a variety, Paul. And I don't need to ask you what your highlight of the day was. It would have to be going out in that Corolla with two times British rally champion Johnny Milner. How fantastic. But seriously, for any rally fan, this has to be the highlight of the year for your calendar. If you like rallying, you'll like Rally Day. From Rally Day here at Castle Coombe in 2012, thank you for watching Special Stage.